Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video from our channel, Olden Goldens. In this video, we'll be highlighting American celebrities who have passed away in the last few days, along with other notable figures from around the world. Before we proceed, we kindly ask you to show your love and support by giving this video a like. It means a lot to us. James Darren who went from teen idol status acting in youth-oriented movies like Gidget to becoming an actor in TV shows such as Star Trek Deep Space Nine and T.J. Hooker and a singer and director, died Monday at Cedars sinai Hospital in Los Angeles. He was 88. His son Jim Moray said that he had been able to express his love for his family while being treated in the cardiac unit. He was a good man. He was very talented, Moray said. He was forever young. Moret said he was grateful that his father had been able to embrace his signature role as the surfer Moondoggy in the Gidget movie and that he continued to interact with his fans. Born in Philadelphia, he studied acting with Stella Adler in New York and was signed to Columbia Pictures, where his first role was in Rumble on the Docks. He went on to appear in films including Operation Madball and Gunman's Walk before being cast in the 1959 teen movie Gidget starring Sandra Dee and Cliff Robertson. Darren also sang the title track for the hit movie, which was based on the experiences of a teenage surfer girl in Malibu, and later became a popular TV series. The Gidget theme song launched a successful singer career for Darren, who had a gold record with Goodbye Cruel World in 1961 and released at least 14 albums. He continued to appear in feature films, including The Guns of Navarone, The Gene Krupa Story, all the young men, and because they're young. He reprised his role as Moondoggy in Gidget Goes Hawaiian and again in Gidget Goes to Rome, though he was tired of the typecasting by then. Moving into television, he starred in the series The Time Tunnel, and after a brief sojourn in Italy appearing in Jess Franco's Venus in Furs, he went on to guest star on numerous series including Love, American Style, Fantasy Island, and The Love Boat. Darren was a regular on T.J. Hooker from 1983 to 1986 and also moved into TV directing, working on series including Beverly Hills 9210 and Melrose Place. He found a new generation of fans in 1998 as Vic Fontaine, the holographic lounge singer on Star Trek Deep Space Nine. He is survived by his wife Evie, sons Jim Murray, Christian Darren and Tony Darren, and five grandchildren. Eric Gilliland, a longtime comedy writer best known for his work on Roseanne, died September 1st. The cause was cancer. Gilliland, an Illinois native and 1984 graduate of Northwestern University, wrote for the ABC comedy from 1992 to 1996. He went on to consult on The Connors in 2019. His first big writing gig in TV was on Who's the Boss? He went on to write for Living Dolls, The Wonder Years, Doogie Howser, That 70s Show and My Boys. His most recent project was the podcast, The Cinnamon Bear, A Holiday Adventure. Gilliland received WGA Award nomination in 1994 for Roseanne. In 2019, he received a Daytime Emmy nomination for writing the children's show, The Was Was Show. Away from TV, Gilliland was quite the whistler. His tooting was featured on Sam Winch's The Lullabadeer and on the soundtrack for an episode of Penn & Teller. Bullshit! Tributes to Gilliland continue to pour in on Facebook, like this one from Modern Family co-creator Steve Levitan. Weird, I know, but I found myself thinking this morning that Eric Gilliland would have taken some perverse pleasure in knowing that, of all people, he was outlived by Dick Van Dyke. That's one of the ways Eric and I bonded back in eighth grade, over our mutual love for The Dick Van Dyke Show. And Monty Python, Jack Benny, The Carol Burnett Show, SNL, and Bad Puns. Eric was just plain smart and funny. In high school, we did plays and musicals and comedy assemblies, parts of which we even co-wrote. He somehow pulled off the impossible of being biting and sweet at the same time. While doing a comedy show called Little Bucky for our local Glenview radio station with our friends Thalia Kolodomos and Betsy Brennan, I was so bad at doing accents that Eric nicknamed me the man with a thousand voices. Gilliland's fellow Roseanne scribe Stan Zimmerman wrote this. After a particularly brutal day of abuse from Roseanne, 
the writing staff decided to take out our anger and smoosh food all over one of her framed publicity photos on the wall in our main office. Somehow, I ended up with the only Polaroid. And there's Eric, smiling brightly, front and center. As others have more eloquently described Eric as an extremely bright, witty and dry writer, humorous person, I know he looked at me and Jim's open queerness in the writer's room as both brave, scary, and yet very appealing. Fly high, my friend, in all the colors of the rainbow. You were loved by so many. Fat Man Scoop, the rapper who worked with Timbaland, Missy Elliott, and Mariah Carey, has died at 53. The cause of death is not yet known. The Party King artist suffered a medical emergency during a performance on Friday night in Hamden, Connecticut, and was transported via ambulance to a local hospital, according to a statement shared by Mayor Lauren Garrett. Video shared by TMZ shows the rapper collapsing on stage around 8.30 p.m. before people rushed over to administer CPR. Scoop's manager, Michael Birch, announced the artist's death Saturday morning with a heartfelt tribute. It is with the heaviest of hearts I announce the passing of Isaac Freeman III, known professionally as Fat Man Scoop, he wrote in a statement. You taught me how to be the man I am today. I love you, Scoop. Thank you so much for everything you gave to me. Rest in peace. Birch, who also performs as Pure Cold, added on Instagram, I am honestly lost for words. You took me all over the world and had me performing alongside you on some of the biggest and greatest stages on this planet. The things you taught me have truly made me the man I am today. Thank you so much. I love you, X. Born August 6, 1971 in New York City, Freeman found success with his 1999 single Be Faithful, which later topped the UK and Ireland charts in 2003. He went on to mentor a group of British musicians the following year on the Channel 4 series Chancers. He was known for his appearances on the 2005 Singles Lose Control by Missy Elliott and It's Like That by Mariah Carey. Most recently, Scoop collaborated with Tekken 9 and Yee on the single No Popcorn that dropped in July. Scoop also had a cameo as himself on a 2007 episode of the animated series The Boondocks, and he competed on Celebrity Big Brother 16, UK vs. USA in 2015. Linda Deutsch, the Los Angeles-based special correspondent for the Associated Press, whose 50-year career with the news service included covering many of the most attention-getting trials in Hollywood history, died Sunday of pancreatic cancer at her Los Angeles home surrounded by family and friends. She was 80. Her death was announced by the AP. Deutsch had been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in 2022. Although she underwent successful treatment at the time, the cancer returned this summer, according to the AP. In her long career covering courts for the AP, Deutsch penned articles about such major criminal and civil cases as the murder trials of Charles Manson, Simpson, Phil Spector, and the Menendez brothers. She covered trials involving Michael Jackson, Patty Hearst, and the police officers charged in the beating of motorist Rodney King, among many others. Deutsch's court's career began with the 1969 trial and conviction of Sirhan Sirhan, the convicted assassin of Senator Robert F. Kennedy. When a big trial loomed, AP's assignment editors didn't have to ask who should get the assignment, said AP's former executive editor and CEO Louis D. Bacardi in Deutsch's AP obituary. No, the instant question was, is Linda available? She mastered the art of celebrity trial coverage and in the process became something of a media celebrity herself. Survivors include Uncle Marvin Sosna, cousins Elaine Deutsch, Lisa Deutsch, and Lana Sternberg, and godson Luke Rattray. Funeral arrangements are pending. Julian Ortega, an actor who starred in Netflix's recently wrapped Spanish hit Elite, has died after reportedly collapsing on a beach. He was 41. Spain's National Union of Actors and Actresses confirmed Ortega's death in an obituary this week. From the Union de Actores y Actresses, we send our most sincere condolences to the actor's family and friends. It read, There are differing accounts of Ortega's death. Initial reporting suggested Ortega had drowned, but later accounts said he collapsed on the shore of Zahora Beach in Barbade on early Sunday evening. Olive Press Spain, an English-language publication in Spain, reported that Ortega went into cardiac arrest and that paramedics spent up to 30 minutes attempting to revive him. Ortega appeared in six episodes of Elite in 2018. The show is one of Netflix's most established Spanish originals, 
and its eighth and final season recently premiered July 26th on the platform. His other credits included Caronte, a crime drama that streamed on Amazon Prime Video. Spanish actress Silvia Marso was among those who paid tribute to Ortega, writing on Instagram that it was hard to comprehend the news. Absolute sadness, she said. Betty Bridges, who guested on dozen of popular TV series during a 40-year career ranging from Good Times and Charlie's Angels, to Lou Grant and Hill Street Blues, to ER and Two Broke Girls, and later was a prominent acting coach, died August 27. She was 83. She died at the Phoenix home of her son, Different Strokes and reality TV star Todd Bridges, where she had been in hospice care. Rep. Elizabeth Much confirmed her death to deadline, but no cause was given. Born on August 1, 1941, Betty Bridges got her screen start guesting on such 1970s TV shows as Police Woman, Charlie's Angels, and Norman Lear's Good Times, and Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. She continued to work consistently for much of the next four decades, mostly in TV. She made guest appearances in popular series, including Wonder Woman, What's Happening, Lou Grant, Different Strokes, Hill Street Blues, Dallas, Beverly Hills, Allie McBeal, The Practice Scrubs, and Two Broke Girls. Along the way, Bridges also appeared on the big screen in A Night at the Roxbury, Rooster, The Concrete Jungle, and others. She also appeared in the 2000 short film Building Bridges, written and directed by her sons Todd and Jimmy Bridges, the latter also a veteran actor. She became a prominent Hollywood manager and acting coach and co-founded Cane Bridge Academy, an acting school where she was a popular teacher. She worked mainly with children, particularly minorities, and eventually ran her acting school out of her Los Angeles home, often letting neighborhood children take classes for free. Her students included Nia Long, Tony O'Dell, Sana Lathan, Marcus Chong, Shoshani Hall and sisters Regina and Raina King, the family said. Betty Bridges played a crucial role in Todd's recovery from addiction. Her family said her tough love and unwavering support highlighted the profound impact of family and friends in overcoming life's toughest battles. In lieu of flowers, the family asked that donations be made to Global Recovery Initiatives Foundation. Breaking news of the day. Willie Nelson is back on the road, much to the delight of fans across the country. After weeks of uncertainty surrounding his health, the iconic country music and rock and roll Hall of Famer made a triumphant return for his annual 4th of July picnic at Freedom Mortgage Pavilion in Camden, New Jersey. This beloved event featured performances by legends like Mavis Staples, Marin Morris, and Bob Dylan, showcasing Nelson's resilient spirit and enduring influence in the music world. Two weeks prior, Nelson, who recently celebrated his 91st birthday, had been reported to be under the weather, according to updates from his social media accounts. His doctors advised him to rest, leading to adjustments in his outlaw roadshow schedule. During this period, fans were treated to performances by his band, family, featuring his son, Lucas Nelson, and special guests, who kept the spirit of Nelson's music alive with renditions of his classics and more. The Outlaw Music Festival Tour, which Nelson announced in February, boasts an impressive lineup that includes Bob Dylan, Robert Plant, Alison Krauss, and many others. Nelson himself expressed excitement about the tour, noting that it promises to be the biggest and best yet. Over the past decade, Nelson's festival dates have become a major annual event in North America, drawing stars such as Chris Stapleton, Neil Young, and Sheryl Crow. The music community has rallied in support of Nelson, with many artists sharing their joy at his return. Margot Price, for instance, expressed her happiness, saying, Yes, this makes my heart so happy. We must protect Willie at all costs. Nelson's legacy was also celebrated in 2023 with a star-studded 90th birthday tribute at the Hollywood Bowl, featuring performances from Beck, Gary Clark Jr., and many others, marking another milestone in his storied career. Wood Bowl, featuring performances from Beck, Gary Clark Jr., and many others marking another milestone in his storied career.